on Nimbus, probably my uh, favorite. It's the second favorite of the new maps. Down here at the bottom or very right corner, we're going to have Destiny in the blue. It's like boxing, man. In the blue corner, weighing what looks to be 120 pounds <laughs> from North America. Steven Destiny Bonnell. Oh, that, that's one of those things I've, um, as an MMA guy, I've always just kind of been fascinated with. It would be really funny just to see some of that crossover if we've actually had, like, um, a, a really good stage guy that could do, like, a very, like, solid Bruce Buffer-esque uh, type of introduction. So, yeah, it, it, I, could just, I could just imagine. Like, the closest one we had, I think, was at IPL, like, way, way back in the day when Cats, uh, I mean, uh, Cats Pajamas did. And it was a really good job, and I wish we would have continued doing something like that. Right now, we have more kind of like that hosty feel, and it's like, let's introduce this guy. Or or it's the casters that usually end up hi trying to hype up the crowd. So, um, at, so at some point in the future, I think it would be really cool to have, like, a really solid, like, voice stage guy that just, like, screams out, hypes the names out. All right, he's of course uh, facing off against his opponent in the red corner, at the top right side of the map. It is flip sides Bales. Now both players are sitting at a score of one one. Destiny took game number one into his hands uh, with really good snags. Was able to actually make uh, use of the Vipers a lot better than he did in game number two. Game number two was just Bale's positioning really well and realizing what was going to happen to him because uh, versus spending the additional econ on more phoenixes, more void rays, more units that would only help him out realistically so much. He decided to get the Templar Archive down a lot sooner, get a few more Templars out, and you saw the consequences of it. The Vipers were ne never able to get comfortably close to the army to snag the Colossus away, and uh, as he pushed up with the army, I feel like he went a little bit too deep, got force fielded off, he lost, I want to say, about 85% of his army, and then um, whatever he tried to remake while he was taking a hatch was just not enough when the attack came to him. So, game three, though, different place. It's almost like a restart. Uh... Best of three basically turns into a best of one. Fun, 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 fun fact. Fun fact of the day. When it's one one, it just basically turns into a best of one. If you guys didn't know. <laughs> uh, but because how this map is set up with the in base expansions, uh, it is very macro oriented. We see Bales taking already that in base expansion, uh, even though he did go all the way to gate core. Uh, sometimes we see some Protoss getting a little bit more riskier, and they'll skip actually the core and try to get the gate, uh, try to get their expansion up a little bit sooner. Now you do see the second gate, ga uh, sorry, second gas getting taken right now. Uh, the reason for that is Bales decided to stick with one gas a little bit sooner, and what he, what happens is when. You, Typically, a two gas player, he'll usually put four to six drones, on, uh, sorry, four to six probes on them. With one gas, he can only really have a maximum of three, and what's going to happen in that regards is he'll have more uh, mineral collection. It won't be by that much, but he, between all the trips back and forth, he'll eventually have an, a, like a significant amount more where, where he can actually take his expansion a little bit sooner. So, kind of, kind of a little bit of a details for some of you guys that might be a little bit newer, trying to get a little bit more used to the game and uh, get a feel for it, or try to understand sort of why they open up how they do. Third game in a row with Bales opening up and bringing in Stargate play into the fold. Now, I'm not going to guess and uh, No, I'm, I'm just not going to guess what unit's going to come out of there. I, I, I thought Oracles would be the best option in the first two games, but he decided to go with Phoenixes instead. So, really, again, once again, up, up to the player and what they're most comfortable with that really makes it, you know, take and work. Uh, Destiny, is he going to plan on taking a third base? Like it does sound, it, it sounds a little bit odd, but uh, you still don't see a third base. Like typically by this point, Zerg would preferably like to have a third base, like already at least building. Uh, typical third base, at least with the early macro game, you will see f probably anywhere from the four to five minute. We're already heading a little bit closer to the seven minute mark, so with the with this seven with this four gases, either he's going for quick lair and the mutas, or he might be just going for a very heavy nidus timing. And nidus timing, of course, will be very weird because one, it's going to be hard to pull off because of the overlords just falling apart. The phoenixes are out on the map. Now 
Like, it has to be Spire. It has to be either Corrupt or Phoenix. Is like... Third base, uh, gonna get built hopefully here momentarily. Phoenix is are coming over. He actually needs to hurry and put down the hatch before the drone gets sniped down. <clears throat> Phoenix is flying in. Across the edges, uh, taking a little bit of damage, but already picking off two drones and a uh, sport car. Of course, this one is a lot closer to the gas, so he's not gonna have exactly that same accessibility. So we're going to see no Nidus, but we do see that infestation pit, and we do see the Hydro. So it looks like just Destiny is going to follow up into that same style he played last game. Uh, a little bit of a later third. We'll see how that works out for him. But now he's got to really focus on trying to actually defend this uh, third hatch, or he might lose it. And it looks like he will lose it. There are definitely not enough units. There are five Zelts plus a Mothership core. No, 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 no. And with some Phoenix support, that amount of links is definitely not going to get the job done. Destiny practically has no choice but to cancel it at this point. <sighs> Zelt's uh, deciding to start heading up into the main base. And <laughs> I, I, I think to his surprise, he, uh, Bales is looking at Destiny and being like, Man, wow, do you not have really units out right now? Like... This is when you almost want to have a little bit of a panic attack, like, what the hell is going on? How do you, what have you been spending your money on? Is there something that you're hiding from me? Is there, like, an itis, or is there anything else going on? <laughs> and Destiny, two base nidus. I mean, no, sorry, not two base nidus, he's going two base hive. This is insanity. This is just absolute insanity. No, once again, uh, looks like we're having almost like a, a little bit of a sim similarity to game number one. Uh, Destiny pays back the favor, forces the cancel on the third base of Bales, while he's uh, trying to rebuild his own actually at the same time right now. I did see a warp prism. Was it over here? Yes, it is. It was right over here. I just wanted to see how he plans to harass with that. We still have, of course, uh, those five phoenixes alive. We'll see how much damage they're going to be able to get done. Can't get too close though to the Hydra Zone. It might fall. One was gonna fall, yep. Two? Maybe two? No. Close. Taking a look inside the main base, additional gateways getting added on. Charge, Templar, Archive just about finished up and Bales is just realizing, man, like you're gonna play exactly the same way or attempt to play about the same way that you did last game. If you're gonna get those Vipers out, I am for sure just gonna go right into Templars. Uh, there's no other reason because the best part about the Templars as well in this type of scenario is once you feed back the Vipers, if you have enough stored energy, you could storm those units and on top of storming those units, you could form them into Archons that could actually really, really help you in battle, especially versus Road Chargers. So. Um, there, there's multiple assets to uh, getting and going it right into those Templar archives and getting the Templars out. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at the production tab. We do have some of those Vipers already out on the map, beginning to drain the energy. I mean, I'm sorry, drain the drain the life, <laughs> drain the life out of the building so they can gain energy. More Hydras and Roaches in production as well, getting his Roach speed burrow underway. Plus one shields, we can see already, already the Protoss player, Bales, has plus one attack done as well. Now, if Bales controls his units properly, I think he should have this game in the bag. It might be a little bit too early to call, like I don't want to GG it out, but... With Templars out on the field, it's going to be very tough for a very, you know, close possibility for these vipers to actually snag away at anything like it almost might be worth it for him just to try to snag all three of the templars out of the way first uh because they could be just as dangerous actually no never mind that's a stupid idea don't ever let me say something stupid like that again i just realized if you just snag a templar with a lot of energy <laughs> you just snag storms within within your army sorry we're having we're having some suicidal thoughts today just yeah no 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 don't do that But, pretty good saturation right now for Bale, starting to get his uh, probes on those 5th and 6th gases as well, uh, realizing that he can't forget about them as well. 
Now we do have a few Templars within the army. We have an Immortal and a Colossus. We don't have really much more else than that, but uh, we're watching and seeing right now as Bales is trying to find a way to harass. And uh-oh, War Prism does get spotted. Where are those Vipers? Vipers are nowhere near to snag it, unfortunately. That was actually a really cool thing that we saw in game number one that uh, helped him out. Was uh, He was able to snag down those War Prisms along the way. Or Prism now heading on back to the third base. Um, and it's one of those things he shouldn't be really too, too worried about, at least at third base, because there's spine crawlers, there's spores there. The, the main base, a little bit of a more different story. He's got spores, but really no static ground defense that he can really work with. Meanwhile, over here on this side of the map, we're going to have to really zoom out to be able to get as big of a shot as we possibly can. Hiding his Vipers up until the very last minute. Going to bring them up. Trying to snipe down. Oh! Oh, I could feel the pain and agony. I could hear the screams of a thousand crying zergs right now. Um, so close to being able to get close enough to snag down a lot of those units, but uh, feedbacks completely wipe a lot of those Vipers out of the way. A lot of Templars still left with energy. Storm's getting thrown down, and now with the Immortals, with the Colossus, with the Archon and the Charged Lots, Bales on a warpath the other direction, starting to barrel down, killing a lot of the units as well during the way. And now, with roaches and the no energy vipers around, I am not sure how this is going to end up, <laughs> unfortunately, for our uh, Zerg player Destiny. Four attached spotted by the Zealot. Phoenix is flying over here to the edge. <laughs> Couple spore crawlers uh, greet one of those phoenixes very uh, with a lot of heart. <sighs> For the moment there, I almost thought we had a Nidus network, but uh, looks like it's just some creep getting thrown down on top of these probes. Meanwhile, over here towards the third base, Storm is getting thrown down, pushing and pressing his way, waiting for that perfect opportunity to throw down some more storms. Um, Bales is looking really good, I gotta admit. Bales is looking really good. There's another storm that gets thrown down right on top of a good cl uh, chunk of roaches. Colossus actually uh, gets snagged down, and these Vipers have a lot of energy. This might be a good time to try to pull those Immortals in if he possibly can somehow, and actually just deciding to rather than pull them in, utilize Blinding Clouds so the Immortals have to walk a little bit closer and gain a little bit of surface area on them. Now, Archons are still alive, but there's only one Immortal, and Charge Lots reinforcing. If he... He can micro out of this realistically. It's going to take a lot of effort, but he can micro out of this, and you can see just doing the best that he possibly can. A couple roaches do go down, but the charge will run out. Then he just backs up, slowly micros, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He's got the fourth hatch up right now, but, you know, is it going to be enough? Destiny's dropping in supply 90 to 115. Clears out that first round of charge lots. Is there another warping incoming for the time being? No, there is not. And oh my goodness, how close was that Zealot's death? I wonder right now if Bales actually saw that. Greater Spire incoming. Roach is uh, planning to go on that high ground. <laughs> well. I was about to tell like, they are just planning to go up into the high ground, but they spot that there's an army in a fourth base there, and Destiny just calls uh, Gratz because he knows he's down a base. Uh, fully four base saturated Protoss with a better supply and just kind of the advantageous position he was in. It would have been a very tough uphill battle for Destiny to take on. So, Bales moves on 2-1. to one. Uh, Good put-out effort from Destiny. I definitely enjoyed watching his game and especially showed what happened in the first game. If you're actually able to have an opportunity to use Vipers, how much uh, damage they could actually realistically do to a Protoss. But, uh, Bales... Next two games prepared very well, and you could just see what, what, what just how much of a bigger difference it made to actually have those Templars with a lot of energy, not only just for the feedbacks of the Vipers, but to have those Storms on top of all the lighter units, uh, like the Hydralisks, the, ling the Lings, and of course it never hurts to actually storm some of those Roaches. So that's going to do it for that series. Bales moves on to the round of 16, and it puts himself one step.